Welcome to the Elon Musk Signal Channel. This week Starbase has noted some unusual activities. Roads are blocked off but not for transporting rocket prototype. So what's the reason? In addition, construction of the second launch tower is also progressing rapidly. What special role will this launch tower play in SpaceX's mission to conquer space? Let's explore right in this video. Our first stop is the fuel storage area, once a cornerstone of SpaceX's rocket testing activities. However, with technology advancing and the increasing demands of space missions, old vertical fuel storage area no longer meets requirements. Therefore, SpaceX has decided to dismantle this area and build a modern, more efficient horizontal fuel storage facility. The dismantling process of Tank Farm GC4 at Starbase follows a method similar to the production of Starship prototypes in 2021. The tank shell is separated from the main tank using larger white outer shells sandwiching perlite insulation material. Following the resounding success of test flight number four, SpaceX is gearing up for the next mission, first ever super heavy landing. This is a significant step in the company's Mars colonization plan. To ensure the safety of this bold test, SpaceX is focusing closely on the catch arms system, component tasked with catching the massive super heavy rocket upon landing. After test flight number four, the catch arm system underwent meticulous checks to ensure flawless operation. The testing process included reviewing all hardware, checking joints, and ensuring the system can withstand the intense forces during the landing of the colossal super heavy rocket. This is a crucial and challenging mission, demanding high precision and accuracy. SpaceX is exerting its utmost efforts to prepare for this historic test, promising to usher in a promising new chapter for the aerospace industry. Additionally, a heavy-duty crane has been mobilized to access and perform maintenance work on the orbital launch mount, OLM. Interestingly, the entire pipeline system on the quick disconnect portion of the OLM has been dismantled and carefully reinstalled. However, for a period of time, this pipeline system remained tilted, indicating SpaceX engineers are diligently adjusting and returning it to its original position. This unusual maintenance process underscores SpaceX's meticulous attention to detail. Checking and calibrating the pipeline system, even in its smallest details, play a crucial role in ensuring the safety and efficiency of upcoming test flight. Furthermore, the construction of the second orbital launch tower is progressing impressively. The first stage columns of the tower have been erected, marking a significant step in SpaceX's infrastructure expansion plan. The second launch tower is a crucial part of SpaceX's strategy to meet the increasing demands of Starship missions. Beyond just adding another launch tower, this new area includes an additional orbital launch mount and various supporting infrastructure. A notable aspect is that both launch mounts will share a fuel storage area, optimizing construction and saving space. Strategically positioned on the outskirts, where previously there was a near-orbit fuel storage, this location allows SpaceX to expedite construction ahead of the fifth test campaign, minimizing movement restrictions within the area. The immense size of the tower's columns, much larger than the construction workers themselves, illustrates the grand scale of the project. These columns are set on solid concrete foundations, ensuring structural integrity for the entire tower in the future. The construction site of the second launch tower at Starbase is not only bustling with gigantic columns, but also involves the installation of robust defense system. A special shielding layer is installed directly beneath the tower base, significantly sturdier than the upper shield. This defense system must withstand the energy emitted by 33 Raptor engines surrounding the Starship rocket during launch. Therefore, installing the defense system at the tower's base will take longer before SpaceX begins stacking the tower's tiers. At Starbase, besides towering constructions rising, there's also a monster being assembled. The Turks Demag CC-8800 D1 crane. Its colossal size makes transporting it by road an impossibility. Even the legendary crawlerway at Kennedy Space Center couldn't accommodate it. Hence, the Turks crane is being assembled piece by piece, turning this process into a unique construction project within Starbase. Over the next few weeks, we anticipate following the latest progress on assembling this monster. This machine plays a pivotal role, having lifted Booster 4 and Starship 20 onto the orbital launch mount. 
The focal point at Starbase is also the thermal shield of Starship 30. SpaceX is rapidly advancing the process of dismantling and replacing this entire system, promising significant improvements for the fifth flight. Scaffolding around Starship 30 is evidence. This urgent operation. Over the past seven days, a large amount of old tiles has been removed, showcasing an impressive construction pace. Key to this progress is concurrent work across multiple layers, significantly reducing turnaround time. While the effectiveness of the new thermal shield still needs real-world validation, the success of the fourth flight, with its spectacular imagery, instills confidence in the direction of development. However, perfecting the thermal shield will still require considerable time and effort. And currently, another intriguing event unfolded at Starbase. Test tank B1 14.1 unexpectedly appeared, moved from SpaceX's testing area to the launch pad. According to speculation, SpaceX may fill test tank B1 14.1 with material equivalent to a Super Heavy upon landing. Subsequently, they will use the chopsticks to lift the tank, simulating the impact and testing the catching procedure in a scenario closely resembling reality. However, this test will only be conducted vertically as B1 14.1 lacks engines and cannot fly. If the chopsticks fail to grip, tank will simply fall to the ground. Upcoming highway closures, June 25th, 26th, and 27th, with the primary closure on Tuesday and backup windows on Wednesday and Thursday, further bolster the likelihood of test flight. Decommissioning the near-orbit launch area means prioritizing test operations on launch pad A. Positive signals include the first permit issued for Starship's fifth flight, not from the FAA but from the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, FCC. While the permit doesn't reveal the launch date, it hints at significant details. Communications capability of the booster during soft water splashdown or return to the launch pad. This shows SpaceX is establishing a solid legal foundation for a historic capture. FAA's critical flight capability decision for Starship will need adjustment if SpaceX proceeds with capture. However, the current permit allows Starship to fly a trajectory similar to the fourth flight, albeit without capture authorization yet. With no accident investigation needed for the fifth flight, the licensing process may proceed more swift. This promises a dynamic and successful Starship 5 campaign compared to previous one. And those are the noteworthy updates featured in today's broadcast. Please leave your comments on this episode and stay tuned for more anticipated events in the journey of space exploration. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to catch more exciting videos on the Elon Musk Signal channel. Goodbye and see you again.